Hi folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Connie from Faf Designs. I'm a furniture painter and I'm also a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. In the video you're about to watch, I'm going to show you how I transformed this piece from a really dark and drab dated piece of furniture into something a little bit brighter and happier. So this piece was cleaned with Dixie Bell's White Lightning and then scuff sanded and I am now applying my base coat. So this piece is going to be layered with lots of different colours and I wanted a nice neutral base layer, one that was going to give me um, a little bit of warmth as well. So I used Dixie Bell's Silk All in One Mineral Paint in the colour Sandcastle and I've mixed in a little bit of sea spray just so that it holds a little bit of texture when I'm applying it and I'm using a stippling motion and applying it with a premium chip brush. So once the silk paint was dry I then grabbed my continuous mister bottle and spritzed quite a generous amount of water on the surface of the silk paint. Now silk paint has got a built-in top coat so it's really really good for a base layer of paint if you are going to do like a blended kind of technique like I'm going to do because it doesn't reactivate when you spray water on it so that silk paint is there as a base layer it's not going to budge no matter how much I try even if I use lots and lots of water, it's still not going to budge. So that is one of the reasons I use it as a base coat. The other one is because it has a built-in stain blocking primer. And that dark varnish finish was, it looked like a bleeder. So I have given myself a little bit of insurance by using silk for the base layer. Because it's going to stop any bleed through issues that I might have had. So as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm starting with my next colour which is terracotta and I don't want full coverage of terracotta, I do want areas of the silk colour to poke through underneath, I kind of want a really sort of um, soft look to the terracotta. So that's why I'm using plenty of water because I don't want full coverage and I'm also using a Bestang brush to swirl the paint on instead of painting it on as you normally would do. So the next colour that I used was Rebel Yellow and I'm only showing you the very top of this piece because I worked in small areas so that the paint wouldn't dry. So I've got a different brush, I've got a clean brush, I'm keeping my surface wet with the continuous mister but I don't want it to the point where it's completely saturated and I'm stippling in the Rebel Yellow into the terracotta to soften the terracotta a little bit and also give more tonal variety to the colour. I've just done a close up of one of the doors so you can see how little paint I'm actually using on the brush. I am only slightly dabbing a little bit of Rebel Yellow on the brush and just stippling that over the top of the wet terracotta with the Bestang brush to give a really, really soft tonal effect. Again, this is a similar technique, so I'm using apricot as my final colour to blend with 
and I'm not looking for a perfect blend. I really want quite a lot of tonal variation in here, hence the reason that I'm stippling the paint on and not just mixing it in a pot or looking for, like you know, like a perfect blend. Um, so I'm just stippling the paint all over, making sure that it's not drying out as I go and just working it into the other colours underneath without mixing them too much. So I hope you caught all of that, fast forwarded through a lot of it because it's quite a big old piece and there were quite a lot of layers of paint there which is why I left it overnight to dry. So the next thing that I did is started to cut out the individual flower elements from the wildflower and butterfly transfer. So I played around a little bit with the cutout pieces before I decided on placement and then I started to apply the transfer. So all you do when you apply a transfer is remove the backing sheet, press it down onto your surface, use the wooden tool to press the transfer onto your furniture and slowly remove the plastic sheet from the transfer and just do it slowly and surely. This one is quite a detailed piece. It's got lots of little petals and leaves. So I'm just going really, really steady with this. And then I am going to build the design up across the bottom of the piece. So when you get to the end of your rubbing, which has seemed like forever on this particular one, um, you peel off your plastic and then you can use either a microfiber cloth or your finger or you can use a Dixie Bell finishing pad to basically rub that piece down and burnish the transfer. And all that means is you are pressing the transfer down onto the surface and eliminating any air bubbles and just making sure that it is stuck down really, really securely. So I'm fast forwarding towards the end of my flower arrangement and um, it took quite a long time to build up the pattern and get the placement exactly where I wanted it but I'm pretty happy with how it looks. And then the final thing is just to give it a rub all over just to make sure that it's stuck down really, really nice and securely. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm gonna lock that transfer in and make sure that it's really, really sealed well. So I am using clear coat in flat with a synthetic brush and I'm just brushing it all over the entire piece, not just over the transfer, I'm doing it over the top, around the front and down the sides as well, which is gonna lock in that paint effect and also seal the transfer. So I left the clear coat to dry 
for a good few hours in front of the heater to make sure that it was really really dry and then I'm going to just add a whitewash effect I'm using Voodoo Gel Stain in the colour White Magic and I've basically just wet the area of um, where I'm going to do again I'm working in small areas so that this stain doesn't dry too quickly before I've had a chance to distribute it out I'm using an applicator pad, some a spritz of water and a very very small amount of the gel stain and I'm just patting it all over the piece to give a whitewash effect. Before the stain dries you can see me keep spritzing it there with water. I am going to grab a shop cloth, piece of shop cloth and I'm just going to rub the excess of the of the stain off. Um, you can use a whitewash of paint. You could also get a similar effect with white wax. I'm just using um, Voodoo Gel Stain because I love how the product applies and I really like how it looks over this peachy terracotta colour. Again, you'll notice me working in small areas because this stuff dries quite quickly and I do have the heating on in my workshop, so it is drying quite quickly. Um, if I was to do the whole of the front, it'd probably dry at the top by the time I had done down at the bottom. So I am just making sure that I'm only working in smaller areas. And if there's an area where you want a little bit more of the white to be prominent you can just grab your applicator pad and just pop a little bit more on and it's really just about playing around with it and getting the right kind of look that you're after there's no right and wrong way about how to apply a whitewash effect um, I know that in some areas I want more of the terracotta, the peach terracotta colour to, to appear and then in other areas I want more of the white to appear so there is no real sort of rule about this it's just whatever looks good to you and on your piece So as I mentioned I'm working in small areas because I don't want it to dry out before I get a chance to mess around with it and get it how I want and I'm just showing you the bottom half of this because I am whitewashing straight over the top of the transfer which is fine because we sealed the transfer with clear coat in the previous step. I wouldn't advise doing this or putting any kind of whitewash over a transfer until you've sealed it because you can run the risk of the water-based products seeping underneath and lifting the transfer. So the aim of this really is to just to soften the colours ever so slightly on the transfer and on the piece itself which I think it's done a really good job of doing and like I say there is no rule with this you can remove as much of the whitewash as you want to get the desired effect. So I let the Voodoo Gel Stain completely dry for a couple of hours and I'm now going to just neaten off the edges of the drawers. So you'll notice that I painted this piece with the drawers in situ. The reason for that is twofold. Uh, number one is for the purpose of the video so that you guys can see what I'm doing clearly and number two is because it's a cohesive design across the front of the piece so I just wanted to make sure that it looked consistent. So I'm just removing that dated dark varnish off the lip of the drawers. I'm going to give that a good sand back and I'm also going to distress the edge of the drawers a little bit as well.
the last thing that I'm going to do is just seal that voodoo gel stain in with a wax top coat. Now I know I've already sealed it once with clear coat flat but voodoo gel stain is a water based product so I just want to give a little bit more protection and I also really really like the finish that wax gives so I always apply wax with a sponge on a really flat surface like this I'm using a blue applicator sponge and just applying the wax and then buff it off with a microfiber cloth A final step that I'm going to do with this is just give it a coat of Big Mom's Butter on the inside of the drawers because they are looking a little bit dry and tired. I'm using the Lapite brush because it's got a tapered end and it gets into all the corners and this also hides scratches and covers lots and lots of imperfections up it's got really nourishing properties to it and it also smells absolutely gorgeous so these drawers now look and smell very floral and fruity i'm also going to use it on the drawer sides as well this helps the drawers run and just keeps them in really good condition And here it is. There's a little bit of close-up leg action you can see there with the flowers. And there is a front shot. But my absolute favourite shot of all is this side angle. I think it captures the colour and those flowers beautifully. Okay, thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, make sure you subscribe to my channel.